Are you ready to be happier? I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 365, Be Happier in Your Home, Fall Edition. There's so many ways to add some happiness to your home space in the on the fall in particular because it's such a cozy time of year. So we're going to dive into some specifics and some general ideas for you today, along with lots of other things like our crushes and uh, a listener tip. Yeah. And you know what was made me happier? Was putting this list- to me. Well, <laughs> in addition to talking to you, talking about these things to make you happier in your home in the fall, this, I had, I was just, I found myself smiling the whole time I was working on this. So it wasn't uh, really work. It was just fun. Isn't that fun? Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, I, I think so many people love the fall. So many people would declare the fall their favorite time of year. And even though where Anita and I live in Houston, Texas and Southern California, it's not like a real super duper New England fall, but we get some fall and we can enjoy the pumpkins and the pumpkin spices and all that good stuff too. Mm -hmm. It is blistering hot here today. So if you are having fall weather where you are, Enjoy it. Well, today <laughs> is not today, 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 because the episode is coming out on September 9th. So will it still be super hot in Houston in September? Uh, it will be super hot in Houston till the end of September. Yeah, that's how it is here. I find that September is um, often our warmest month. Oh, it's terrible. And then when all the kids go back to school, uh, you know, it's like they want to wear, well, now my daughter has been wearing uniform for several years, but- before that, you know, she'd want to wear some of the fall clothes and the winter clothes we got and it'd be okay in the morning by the afternoon. You're just like, oh, you're melting. I know. And I used to say when it turned to September, I would say, oh, it's going to cool off. And Kevin would always say, no, it's not. No, it's not. It never cools off till the end of September. And I would just be, so I mean, hope would spring eternal in me. Yeah. I would say, no, it's going to cool off. I know it. I know it's going to happen. Well, and who knows with the, the global warming, which isn't really warming everywhere. And it's, you know, some places are colder and some places you just can't even predict it anymore. So who knows no, it, what's going to happen? It can be crazy, but we will. But then when we have a cool front, that really just means it's maybe low 90s instead of, oh. I, it's, I know, because he said, there's a cool front coming this weekend. I looked, I'm like, it's going to be now to 90. Five? <laughs> oh, <Okay. no. laughs> oh, no. Not going to get too excited about that. Okay. Anyway. So clearly this episode is not um, how to be cooler in your home. No. It's how to be happier. So exactly, having a happier home goes a long way to making you happier internally and just at peace overall. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure everybody would agree with that. If you take care of your home, you can, it's really like a form of taking care of yourself. And, you know, there's such a big movement for self care these days and really, you know, watching out and making sure you get good sleep and making sure you're comfortable and eating right and all that. I would put taking care of your home, whether it be purging or cleaning or decorating, right up there with those other important aspects of self care. Well, actually, I I heard recently that people's happiness really depends a lot on how they feel about their home. And if they feel proud of their home, if they love their home, then their happiness level is much higher than people that are not happy about their homes. Isn't that I, interesting? It has to be true. And I'm sure mm-hmm. there have been you know studies done on all of that. But I see that with clients. And I see the transformation when we're able to... It, clean something up, fix something, transform something in their homes that really was, even if it's just an area that was really bugging them and just kind of bringing them down, you know? So imagine this, you go out and you you treat yourself, oh, I'm going to treat myself to a manicure. I'm going to treat myself to a massage. And you come home to a mess. Like your shoulders are immediately back up. Like, you know, your nails don't even look so good anymore. Like it's just not the way to live. So, you know, if you need to do some serious purging and cleaning, don't wait for spring again. You know, fall's a great time to do that too. And start practicing your own self-care at home with your home. And we've got some great ideas today uh, in our fall edition of how not only can you transition from summer to fall, but how you can create a happier atmosphere in your home 
that will transcend into all the other aspects of your life. Yeah, definitely. I think these are things that you can do at home and it's not really decorating related. So, I mean, some of this is, but it's just stuff to really make you um, enjoy the season. And and that's really what you said. It's about self-care. It's about being present, you know, enjoying. We're hitting all the words, but we're not going to say journey. (laughs) Well, I did not use that (laughs) word. (laughs) Slip it in. I don't know. (laughs) But, you know, I can still have it edited out. You say journey. One thing that is about <laughs> the power of the edit, <laughs> the power of the edit. It's good to be married to the editor. Um, one thing that is really about fall decorating, like smack on decorating, is the decorating tips and tricks column that appears in the autumn decorating issue of Country Sampler magazine. Anita and I are very proud of our ongoing column that appears in Country Sampler. It is decorating tips and tricks. So they talk about our podcast in a little paragraph, and then we get to answer uh, each answer a question that are written in by readers of Country Sampler. So just like we do our listener questions here. And so we have each addressed a question. One was about uh, the decor and someone downsizing and purging their bins and what can they use now? And I addressed that one. And then another one is about velvet pumpkins and Anita addressed that one with some great tips on not only purchasing, but how to handle them. And they have lovely pictures and there's a really great picture of Nita Jean in here. And I have a picture too. So it, look for it on your newsstands, whether it be in your grocery store or a, you know, a newsstand someplace, or you can order it online. And you can also get a subscription to Country Sampler Magazine. So we'll put the link to that in the show notes for this episode. So have a look. Again, it's the Country Sampler Autumn Decorating Edition. Yeah, yes. That's fun. I love doing that. Oh, it is. It is and so And, you know, fun. I forget that we did it because we send it, you know, we get the question sent to us and then we, we send the, the answer and, and, you know, if we have pictures that go along with our, what our answer is. And we send it off months and months and months before, right. you know, because right. that's how magazines are run. And then all of a sudden one day I'm like, oh, what's in the manila envelope in the mail? And it's us. <laughs> well, I know. I know. You do, you do forget. And, you know, I have a column also in the Round Top Register and people say, oh, I loved your – article or your column and I would I always have to say what did I what was it about because I I do those months and months in advance and they at some point you can't remember what dumb thing you said so anyway no it's all it's all riveting (laughs) it's all fun yeah no people are cutting them out probably have oh I'm sure that's what's happening (laughs) (laughs) I know I know I'll be starting one yes I have to get a subscription to the round top register I do need it once yeah you need a scrapbook see yeah, for you, I do. I need to it. Um, okay, so how do you want to jump into this? I've got a bunch of specifics. I've got some some kind of really useful yet, you know, not like earth shatteringly exciting practical things to say too. So, uh, should I do that first to get that out of the way? Uh, sure. Okay. So a few practical things, and this will believe me. Trust me everyone. This will lead to additional happiness if you address these things now. Okay. I'm leaning in. Leaning in. It's a good time to, I get all excited, change the filters in your AC and your heat. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You had me going with that one. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know what's going to happen? It's going to be cold and then you're going to go put that on. And then there's, if it's dirty, there's going to be stuff blowing back out at you and nobody likes that. Well, I'll tell you what else is not going to make you happy is your bill. So get those changed out. Yes, it affects the bill, doesn't Mm -hmm. it? Okay. And while we're on the long lines, you know, before you do that, or maybe after you change and you have a nice clean filter, and oh, doesn't that feel good and make everyone happier? Turn on the heat. Make sure it's working. You know, make sure like a little mouse didn't take up residence in one of your ducts, or you know, just somehow the thing just decided not to work anymore. Because again. Some of you live where it's really super cold and it would be very inconvenient for it to be that cold night and then you'd go to turn your heat on and then, you know, of course, then you can't get the guy to come because other people having the same problem and then you're cold. Well, actually, Uh, you just reminded me I've got to call the AC guy because it's time for we like to have an annual checkup on ours and they he checks the heating and the cooling. And I think that's good to have that done once a year just to make sure everything's working. 
you, you are so good. Yeah. I well, mean, no, even, I'm not. I haven't done it yet. I'm, no, but I, I mean, even that it. you think about it. I mean, you know, I. Well, I, I was told to do it. You were told to do it. Okay. <laughs> I can't get credit for that. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Um, <laughs> and then also adjust your sprinkler system if you have an automatic sprinkler system. True. Because as the days are getting shorter and cooler, uh, your plants don't need as much water. And so you don't want to be wasting the water for so many reasons. Uh, and, you know, even for the, even if it was the one simple reason that you'd be drowning your plants, but certainly your water bill and yes. water conservation and all of that, they just don't need it as the weather gets cooler. So go to your uh, your timer, if you have a rainbird and orbit or whatever you have, or if you're a person who has like a, a, you know, a landscaper or a guy that comes to do that, speak to them, have them address it and really take a good look at what's going on because you might be able to really cut down on the amount of water. Uh, people notoriously water too much. So check the interval, uh, and you know, the days that it's doing it and the length of time in each of your stations. Well, and also check to make sure, because sometimes these sprinklers are set and they're you just turn it on and check all your stations because sometimes it's set up where it's just hitting a sidewalk and then running off or it's up too high, too low. Oh, yeah. And so if you can check to make sure that you're using that water from the sprinklers efficiently, you'll end up needing less. Absolutely. And then one other thing that I just did this past week, or I didn't do it, I had it done. Um, and it just makes me so happy. And in the fall, even Does better, it have to do with cleaning? It does. <laughs> but I'm not even doing it, but I'm just observing it. Oh, I you're just- get my windows cleaned. Every uh, fall, I get my windows cleaned. So- because the you know the summer t- sort of takes a beating here with the smog and da 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 and um, kids in and out all the time fingerprints and all that, um, but come fall we're not gonna here we're not gonna have rain till probably January or February so it is a, I have a long uh, you know duration of time where I can really enjoy these sparkly windows and there's something about it, like I'm not gonna get on a ladder and go to the third floor in my you know, old house. That's just something I'm willing to pay for, or I'm certainly not going to send Peter up there. He'd be like, what? Um, so why don't you record another podcast and I'll edit it. I'm not going on the roof to clean a window. So that's something we definitely hire out. If you live in my neighborhood or a general area, I could give you the name of my guy because he is awesome. And I can't even tell you how reasonable he is. So, you know, treat yourself to that uh, or do it yourself. Uh, but I think you're really going to make, it's going to make a difference. And then you can see the the leaves changing through your completely transparent, clean windows. Oh, I'm happy already. That does sound like such a luxury. Well, here's another thing is to clean off those porches and your railing uh, and get ready to uh, really have some fun time out on your porch. And again, this really kind of depends on where you live, but here... This summer, where when everyone, the rest of the nation is out enjoying their porches, we kind of board it up for the summer and say, we'll see you when it cools off. So now's the time that we're cleaning off the porches and getting ready to really enjoy them and spend some time out there. But even if it's cooler where you are, I think this is a great time to get out, just kind of make sure you have all your supplies for enjoying some time on the porch, which... Uh, I'm going to talk about later on, but this is, but, but since we're talking about kind of cleaning and, yeah, yeah. and getting things ready, I'm going to put that there. Oh, no, I so agree. I'm, I haven't been on my porch to really sit there probably since May. Uh, you know, I even, I cover most of the stuff because it gets dusty because no one's out there and every once in a while I'll wipe yeah, off the table. Yeah, we do that too. But it, you know, we know, it's just, it was just too hot to sit there, maybe early in the morning or late at night. But yeah, now the fall is the time that we really use it too. So that's a really good tip. So as far as um, the interior of your home and what's going on in there, I have some great ideas about specific items that you could add. Anita, do you have anything else you want to talk in more of the general sense before we go to that? Well, I think one of the general things I want to say, we've talked about this with respect to Christmas decorating, to not go overboard if it's causing you stress. And I wanted to basically say the same thing about the fall decor. This is the time when you can start thinking about decorating your house for fall. And I think it's fun and I think it's it adds some happiness to add some fall decor. 
But for me personally, it does not make me happy to feel pressured to do a lot of fall decorating. So I think part of this too is finding that sweet spot for you, how much you really want to do, how much you're going to enjoy and stay within that boundary and not to go past it where it's no fun anymore. (laughs) I'm clapping. I gave you a little standing ovation. I so agree. And if anybody is interested in a really well-formed plastic pumpkin, I will be setting up a stand in front of my house because (laughs) last year... Oh, I do remember that day. Okay. I was taking pictures from the grocery store and sending them to your home because... I had, who was it? American Farmhouse Magazine. Somebody was coming and they wanted it to, you know, and I needed more pumpkins and I can't get pumpkins here because it's not cold enough for the pumpkins to really come until like you're pretty deep into the fall. Right. It's, it's Christmas time here when it gets cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, so, you know, really, I don't know, maybe early October, but this was much earlier. Like this was like right after Labor Day. And then they were, they're, plastic pumpkins were at my local Ralph's like all on this shelf and they were really inexpensive. And it was like one of those, like woo- they have woohoo sales. <laughs> it's, it's like, they actually put a sticker on something. It was like, woohoo. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's a woohoo. Like they were serious, like 40% off. I had two carts of them. Oh, stop oh, it. So you clean, did you leave shape. any for anybody else in your town? Well, maybe if one was like scuffed or oh, you know, but even I took some of those because I knew I was going <laughs> to paint them. So I, I'm like, I have two carts and I'm, I'm maneuvering them, and like the pumpkins are falling out and stuff. Okay, but the, I needed them for that. I need. I thought I needed them for that. I don't even think they ended up using all of them, but I. Well, you never know. I wanted to have something fallish when they came. So now I have all of them and they're, they take, they're giant, they're pumpkins. I mean, they're not baby booze, they're giant pumpkins. And oh, so, wow. and I spend time spreading So now you need to get them. one of these big ox carts to put them in, to put in oh, your yeah. front porch or something. And then some hay bales and then maybe right. some corn stalks. No, no, exactly. no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Um, so I'm going to keep a few. And as I said, if and I, maybe I'll just put them out on the curb. <laughs> People can go take them. I'll, I'll stud up my own pumpkin patch on my lawn. I won't even charge. And Have they been spray painted away. gold or are they orange? Uh, some now? of them were chalk painted white. And uh, oh, yeah, okay. others were left. Some of them were green. So I changed those. But I think I left the orangey ones as they were. But yeah, that sort of thing. You know, that's that's and it. You're, I just love pumpkins. Mm-hmm. I think I have a whole pumpkin Pinterest board. Like I just love them. Um, so, you know, and then when you can't really have something and when exactly you want it, you even want it more. So <laughs> that's how I got carried away with that. But I am not going to put all those pumpkins around my house. Do you know what I did find? And I, I hope that you all have them or have seen them at your Home Depot. So yesterday, now we're recording this and it's the end of August, but I went there um, just to get something completely non-related to sunflowers, but I ended up with two large sunflower pots. They are tall. So it's like, eh, I don't know, maybe like a two or three gallon pot. And they're, they're probably up to my neck. They're so pretty. And so I, they were twelve ninety nine. So I just put one on each side of my porch in a, a pre existing pot, and it just looks great. And you know that'll take me because we're not, you know, as we're saying, not it's not really cold here yet. So that I think sunflowers are a great transition this time of year from summer to fall because they got a little bit of both going on. Yeah, that's nice. So yeah, if and you I- have a Home Depot, you might want to go check their garden center because probably they all get the same thing. Well, and the thing that I love decorating with for fall, and I just have fun with them, are those little white baby boo pumpkins. Oh, so I lo- please stop. I mean, I'm trying to oh, wean myself off. This is like crack for me. I, baby boos. Oh, I can't stop with them. And they're little. Oh, I know. But I don't even right, need a big right. shopping cart. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if you if you look for those and you're, I've seen them even at Walmart. So they're kind of mainstream now. They're everywhere. But those are so adorable in a little basket. They're so easy to work in on your table, on a coffee table vignette. Really, you can just tuck them in anywhere. So they're such a great way to decorate and really not a big commitment, not a lot of work. And uh, so they kind of suit me just perfectly. 
Oh yeah, I agree. And um, real or faux, those are really fantastic. Uh, actually, hearkening back to this country sampler question that I answered, I talked about how this, well, this lady had written in how she got rid of all her decor and now she was like, wah, wah, I have no decor. And so I suggested just apples and I decorate with oh, real love- apples all yes, the time. Yes, me too. Me too. So particularly they last green a long ones. time. Yeah. yeah. And I just put them in and my pears. hatch. I tuck them in. I'll sit them on a stack of plates or I put them in a teacup or, you know, some sort of perch them on something. You could put them in a cloche a la Anita. Um, they're great. Yes. Uh, I, in fact, I would, ag- I would agree with you so much. Now, pears are beautiful also. However, the pears do not last as long yeah, as the apples do. It's tough to get a good pear. You know, pears, I think they're not perfect. Like you can get the perfect apple. Like I, I spend a lot of time when I, especially when I know I'm going to either use them for decor or photograph them. I'm like, oh, this has this apple. Oh, it has a little stem. Okay, perfectly. This one goes, oh, sorry, you're the reject. You go back. I find pears are difficult. Right. And then some of them are, yeah, they're just not pretty, but they're delicious. They're a little bumpy and they get bruised easily, but they're yummy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's a great thing to do is to use Real vegetables, real f- fruit, gourds, uh, just so many beautiful natural things to use. If you have a chance to uh, go to a farmer's market, I think it'd be so fun to do that in the fall and get some things for your home to um, you know just kind of display just a, all of uh, nature's bounty. I think that's nice to do in the fall. Oh, yeah. And, and I- then eat it. <laughs> and then eat it, right? Exactly. Um, how about a bunch or two of curly willow? I love curly willow. And it's probably, you know, it's not something most people could just go out in their backyard and cut. So it you know, might be something that you buy online. And I've purchased it online. And it, 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 I can't remember who exactly I got it from, but I've ordered it from a few different places. And it comes well packaged. So it's not going to be crushed when it comes to you. And curly willow is just so pretty. And it's so dramatic because it's so tall. So if you put it in a vase or you put it in um, one of those sort of flower buckets or, you know, a galvanized narrow bucket on the floor, it's a great way to have that uh, sort of greet you in your entry or it kind of softens the line next to a chair. It's just so lovely and it lasts. So then you just tuck it away. I keep mine in the uh, same a kind of flower bucket that isn't as pretty. I just keep them upright. I put a, a plastic garbage bag over them. You can also get those long uh, wrapping paper, rubber made bins and lay them all in there when you're not using them. I've had mine for years. Oh, great idea. Now here's something that we love doing when it, the weather gets to be just right, where it's uh, a little bit cooler. And even if it's cool enough that you need maybe a jacket on. I still think the fall is such a wonderful time to eat outdoors. And this is when we really set that table out and try to eat as many meals outside as possible. One of my favorite meals to eat outside is breakfast though on Saturday. I mean, that's really the day that we can kind of linger and enjoy the meal. And so then maybe we'll have, you know, an extra cup of tea and maybe have a little more you know, fancier meal than we normally do. Cause normally I just have a smoothie, but you know, maybe I have some toast with my favorite uh, jam or something and some, my favorite black tea. And it's so pleasant to be outside. Even if you're in the city, I think it's, there's something special about eating outdoors. And I think that's really nice to work it in, in the fall if you can. Oh yeah, we, it feels it feels really special to do that. Sometimes I'll, like, I'll wake up on a weekend morning and think I'm gonna have my tea outside. On the I know. Today. And then my little dogs they all sit on the back of the couch and they look at me like, "Why can't we come out?" And it's because they're lunatics. because you'll ruin it. Yeah, and every time <laughs> dog, another dog comes by, they go crazy, and I have them all tied up, and le- you know they'd be all tangled, and they can't just sit there without a leash on. They'd go chase him, whoever. Well, came do you have school. a? a fence around your front yard uh, only that those two pieces of that vintage decorative fence oh so your dogs would take oh no them. no yeah they we we end up spending a lot more time in the backyard because they can spend time with us but every once in a while i just want to enjoy my front porch darn it that's right yeah and we have a very small front yard but there is a little fence around there so molly could come out with me but she is a little intimidating to the little doggies and people always think that 
she's going to be friendly because she looks like Lassie. And so they bring their little dog up to her. And I'm like, no, no, step back, (laughs) step back. (laughs) Oh, I didn't know. She's such a lady. I wouldn't think that she would be unfriendly. Maybe she would be like, whatever. the, The little dogs, actually, she's quite nice too. She seems very protective of the little dogs. But if it's a massively sized dog, she kind of goes after them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I think she feels like they're a threat. Yeah. 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 So we have to uh, be very careful with her, but we've not had any problems, but we just kind of avoid issues. So. All right. Well, you you leave her inside too. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, okay. What about this? In your closet, I love an organized closet, and I cannot tell you how happy it makes me to have an organized closet. The, I Marie kondo it this spring, and it made me so happy, and it's still straightened. Can you believe it? It's still nice and neat. I'm impressed. Yes. So I think this is the time if you only have so much room in your closet or depending on how much room you have, this is the time to be kind of thinking about changing out your closet and maybe putting your your long sleeves or something that's a little cooler weather clothing kind of up in the front and then the summer stuff more to the back where it's where the stuff that you have easy access to is the stuff for the season that you have at that time. So I think this is a nice time to kind of shift things around if 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 you need to, if you if you have limited closet space, I think it's nice. Especially if you have another closet to move things to, I think it's nice to kind of move them back and forth. Oh yeah, and I mean, really, happy a clean closet like really takes up your happiness quotient. Like it goes right through the roof when your closet is nice. I think yours lovely. Well, right, and actually, you know, I have a really large closet, and so at yes, first you we, do. So we had a lot. I've of been st- in it. She showed me. Her uh, closet. <laughs> I actually yes. demanded to see it. <laughs> okay. Well, but. I think sometimes when you have a lot of root storage room in your closet, in your master closet, you end up putting a lot of stuff in there that really doesn't belong in there. And it just feels like a junk room. Yeah. So I think that kind of stuff needs to go somewhere else. So it feels a little more organized and a little more peaceful and relaxing, especially considering how much time you spend in there and that that's kind of one of the first places you go to every morning. I think it should be a very peaceful place. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health. Potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co dot co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold at the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. 
Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. So decor in general, your fall decor, you know, what word comes to mind? Cozy comes to mind for me, comfortable. So we're talking about layers of texture, uh, maybe earthy hues or neutrals with some, you know, sort of like some warmth, like some caramel, something like that. And just really comfortable. So maybe that means for you uh, getting some additional or new pillows. So maybe switching out your pillows or your pillow covers, um, adding a throw, try to make it a really chunky one. You know, like those, those arm throws are so gorgeous. Those really chunky ones. And, um, there's a really great, uh, sweater pillow from the Better Homes and Gardens collection, which I can link. It's, it's lovely. I just got three of them. Um, uh, it's this, you know, the, this really chunky sort of sweater in like a lovely off-white on the front and then sort of a canvas back room. So you might want to check that one out. But something like that, we even if you just added that and kept whatever else was going on, that would definitely add a touch of fall, an extra layer of comfort. If you haven't tried layering rugs like we talk about often, maybe this is the year for you to do that. And what better time than as you're sliding into the colder months. So if you've got a sizal or you've got a plain rug or something like it, maybe put something down that has additional texture or maybe additional texture and color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay. So we're talking about texture. How about the sense of fall? I'm thinking about- I'm so glad you said that because I have a whole page of the sense of fall. Oh, good. Okay. So I'm thinking this is the time to put a simmer pot out and you can do it on your stove or somewhere else. But if it's on your stove, you've got to keep an eye on it, but you're going to put a lot of water in. And then some cinnamon sticks, orange peels, or orange rinds, some apple peels, whole cloves, that sort of a thing. And Or you, you can even use a diffuser with some of those essential oils that have some of these uh, scents. I, I love those fall scents so much. And what a great time to use something with some natural scents so that you're not overwhelmed with any kind of chem- toxic chemicals. So I think it's a great time to do that. So what yeah. what what do you do? Well, yeah, I love just throwing, th- I have a little a pot, a little, you know, a little pan pot, I guess, that I'll throw some stuff in, especially on a weekend. At, And as you say, you have to keep an eye on it. So I'm not going to go outside and garden or I'm not going to go to the grocery store. Or you could use a crock pot actually too. Oh, you know, I never thought about that. But I just have this little one that I use. Um, But yeah, I guess you could use a crock pot. And if I'm cooking on a Sunday, and that's such a nice thing to do as the, you know, the days get cooler and shorter, I'll start that early in the morning. And it'll be like, I'll just peel an orange or something like that. Whatever I have on hand, maybe some cinnamon sticks, uh, you know, some cloves, some, just exactly what you said, put some water in it and just put it on really low on the stove. And that's just so lovely. And, you know, you're using stuff you would end up throwing in the trash or, you know, if you have a compost pile, you'd be chucking it in there. So you might as well use it before you do that. Um, I, But, you know, I do love a candle. And it's got to be a good candle and it's got to you know, be clean burning and all those good things. So I have a few that I have tried that I really like. Um, and I like them so much that I burned them all down last year. But these are ones that I may replenish. Um, the Votivo, you guys have all seen that uh, brand, I'm sure, um, out there on your shelves of good gift stores and things like that. The, this one is the teak wood, so it's, it's very woodsy. So teak wood, juniper, and amber. It's really lovely. Uh, there's a Joe Malone. I, I love Joe Malone products. And uh, this one is incense and embers. So it's silver fur, napa leather, and golden amber combo. And those are not inexpensive candles, but they burn for a really long time. And the packaging itself, the container that the candle is, and it's just so sophisticated and lovely. So you might want to give that a try. One that I tried last year, which is uh, hand poured here in California, is by a company called Craft and Foster. 
And that one is only $22 and it's oak moss and amber. Again, a really woodsy smell, amber sage, uh, some lavender and some orange essential oils. I tend to like, um, I don't like pumpkins. I like pumpkin bread. I like, you know, pumpkin pie. I like pumpkin risotto. I like pumpkin gnocchi, all that stuff. But I do not like the scent of pumpkin spice, like wafting through my entire house. Oh, so well, I like woodsy smells. Oh, okay. Okay. But okay. So that's interesting that you do like eating the pumpkin recipes. And s- even if you don't in general like to cook, I think it's really fun to cook in the fall. Uh, just the, the beginnings of fall and the first cool weather, who doesn't love throwing together their favorite chili recipe or their stew? I, it's just, I enjoy it so much. And also I love baking. So this is a time where I'll do maybe like an apple pie. I love making pies or, um, and, and also, you know what my family likes? Pumpkin pancakes. So that's what we'll make for breakfast oh, on a Saturday. Nice. And then drag it out to the porch. And then, well, and the porch, it. drag it. Yeah, it's not too far to drag <laughs> it. But that is that is so fun to make. And then if you're cooking, make it a family affair where everybody's kind of pitching in. And then, I mean, even my daughter who's grumpy about eating outside, by the time we've carried this, you know, put the stuff on the trays and carried it out, she's in a good mood about being sitting out there and us all mm-hmm. talking and laughing. And so it's really some of the best times that of my life really have been spent out on my porch. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. So I think that's something worth doing. So uh, now I know historically you don't put recipes on your blog because your peeps really want decor from you there. But do you have any of these recipes? That, because I'm doing the show notes for this one. So if you do, Well, I think I shared know. the pumpkin pancake one before. So I'll look okay. for that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I have a rosemary apple pie recipe that I will put in here. Oh, good. Okay, so I'm making note of your pancakes. Okay, so yeah, I mean, people might enjoy that. Who so would enjoy pumpkin pancakes? Hello. Yeah, I mean, another thing that's really not cooking, but it's such a fun family activity, are making s'mores. And you know what? You don't need to have a massive fire pit to do that. There's a lot you of these don't need to be a Girl ones. Scout either. No, you don't. I mean. I think I finally bought some of these long skewers for mm-hmm. the s'mores. I, I'm i trying to think what I got. I think some of them are for the marshmallows, but I think I actually got a little thing that puts it all together even. Yeah, it like clasps on it, right? Kind well, of like holds, I think, holds it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say it's like a little basket for the whole thing. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that's really – who doesn't love s'mores? Yeah, they, I would be suspect of anybody who doesn't like a s'more, but I'm sure there's somebody out there. <laughs> it's just going to remind you of all those camps you went to <laughs> and those fun, fun summer times. <laughs> and it's really a fun thing to do, even with adult kids or uh, high school kids. It's it's hard to be grumpy when there's s'mores out there. That's a good point. It truly is. Um, yeah, that reminds me of, uh, there's a cookie that is so delicious. Um and it's Dory Greenspan. She's a big, uh, you know, chef, chef, blogger, blah, blah. And she has a cookie named the World Peace Cookie. And the, like the description <laughs> of it is like, it doesn't even really say what it's in it. It's just like basically if people, if the world leaders ate this cookie, like everybody would just be happy. It's probably the same thing with s'mores. <laughs> so I'll see if I can find that because I've made that cookie uh, before and she's absolutely right. So let me see if I can find that. Um Knitted poofs. I love my knitted poof. I told you guys about that. I don't know if the, my neutral color is back in stock, but um, I will take a look for you. They just had that lovely blue one. But anything with that sort of that chunky weave is just so yummy for fall. Um, how about adding, you know, a, a warm color? You know, we're talking about adding color these days, you know, brown and caramel and cognac. You know, they're all colors and you don't have to go all autumnal. Uh, you can just add a little bit. I think that that particularly really warm caramel color looks so great with off-white and white and all your neutrals. Um, and so w- one thing that I'm thinking I'm going to add this year is a, a little touch of leather. And, oh, look at yeah. you. And whether you want to do real leather or faux leather, you know, that's also uh, personal uh, 
choice, but also a budgetary consideration. So I found on Etsy a woman who makes these caramel colored um, pillow covers. And I will link to her shop. And I think she's in Texas, actually, Anita. And it's it's a really lovely, very simple pillow. Um, you can get a swatch for three dollars, so you can see, you know, what the material would look like. But it's a faux leather, and it's just really, really pretty. I think I'm going to get two for the barn. Oh, great idea! So here's another favorite family activity, or just um you know, a couple activities to go grab a blanket, uh, get a nice bottle of wine. If there's kids, you can get some sodas and go watch the sunset. Do you ever do that outside? We often, and we can't see it go down all the way down, 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 but sometimes over the back of the barn, just, you know, I have to say it's terrible because it oftentimes it stays when there's the smog is bad because it must be the way it reflects and refracts and all of that the sky will be completely pink. Oh, but that is beautiful. You know, the end of September into October. So that is really beautiful. Um, But, you know, to jump in the car and go see the sunset somewhere? No, we haven't done that in years. When we used to live out in Southampton, uh, sometime we, we would drive and just park at the beach. And, you know, obviously the sun is not setting there, but, you know, it's just that time of day. And just, I love the beach at that sort of, that time of Well, day. and even if you can't actually see the sun set, depending on where you are, there's just something magical about that time of day when the sun's setting and things are getting quiet and the sky is getting dark. I think it's a beautiful time of day and just a very relaxing, peaceful time of day. So I think it's really nice to share that with somebody you love outdoors. And so you don't have to go anywhere. You can just do it on your own porch. Yeah. I love all your ideas. Um, I have another decor item that's uh, that's an idea. So we love to decorate with vintage and antique books. Um, You see that on our blogs and we talk about that a lot. Uh, But collecting a, a grouping that really works together takes a little work, you know, and we had offered them and we... We still are offering them because Bespoke Decor is still open for another week or so. Uh, Stacks of vintage books. So I found a woman on Etsy who's doing a similar thing. And she has stacks of either five or 10. And then they're priced accordingly to how many you want. And she had them in this really pretty browns and tans. And again, this sort of caramel color that I'm talking about. I'm sort of picturing them on on a table next to a a white sofa with this uh, caramel colored faux leather pillow. And I'm just loving this whole fall vibe that I'm getting. Mm, Sounds so nice. So this woman with the books, her name is Sarah. She's in Tacoma, Washington. She's her store is on Etsy. And I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention, but particularly Anita, you might be interested in checking out her shop. Because her son has Downs, and 10% of her profits goes to an organization to help kids with Down syndrome. Mm. Oh, nice. And I thought that was just so nice. And so, you know, if you're buying something from her, then you know you're also doing some good, which is very nice and will definitely make you happier. Absolutely. That sounds and, good. Yeah. One thing I mentioned bespoke to course. So one thing that I wanted to highlight that we still have in the store and you know, maybe we will, or maybe we won't by the time you're listening to this. But today, as of recording, we have this amazingly beautiful original painting of a red barn with autumnal leaves and sort of, you know, a country road leading up to it. It's so pretty. So, um, you know, we can put the link to that in the show notes as well. It's definitely worth a look and will definitely give your decor a, you know, a a touch of fall. That is a beautiful painting, and I hope somebody uh, snags that for their own home. It's so beautiful, and uh, we're just so appreciative of all of the sales for Bespoke Decor. And there has been a huge (laughs) surge of orders, so (laughs) we're kind of getting cleaned out. But there's definitely some still... The special order things are still there, and then the things we have in stock, uh, we're not restocking. So as things run out, they run out. So go check, because there are still some things there, and there's some good deals to be had. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. 
And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter Jennifer Grant and ex-wife Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Uh, so how, how about crushes today? Well, this is going to sound like an, a weird one, but it's a real a real issue that I had when we were going to Orlando uh, for the podcast uh, conference. I needed some travel size toothpaste, which does not sound like something hard to find, except that I like the natural toothpaste that are fluoride free. And I don't know if you've looked around, but all the travel size toothpaste, they're almost always the brands that are name brands. They're the big name brands that are not known for non-toxic fluoride free toothpaste. Oh, right. I never yes. thought about that. Yeah. They're the big brands that I avoid. Mm-hmm. So I had to look and look and look to find one that was small. And it's kind of hard to find because a lot of the small sizes are kind of baby, baby uh, toothpaste. And I wanted something a little stronger than that. So I finally found one and I'll include the link, but it's a travel size fluoride free toothpaste. It's a Jason's, um, I think it's called sea, uh, sea fresh and it's got spearmint in it. So I like the mint in it too, but you know, if you're doing any kind of, I think it's some whole, uh, some of these treatments, you're not supposed to do mint, but anyway, this one has mint in it, but, um, Anyway, so I was excited to find it. I'm going to include the link uh, because I I can't be the only one looking for a fluoride-free toothpaste in a travel size. Wow. A problem (laughs) most people didn't even know they had. And now that, yeah. So now you have it. And you solved it. I like that. When someone says, there's a problem here, but I've already solved it. Sure. Tell me it all. Right. <laughs> tell me the problem and tell me it's the solution. It's a problem for me and five other people, I'm sure. But hey, those five people are going to be happier this fall because of that news when they travel. Okay. What's your crush? Ah, uh, shampoo. That's funny. We've been doing like, I don't know. Have we been cleaning out our cabinets? We've been like restocking. It seems like stuff. we've been in in sync. We did beauty products oh, together. So remember? Weird. Yeah. It's, this is the third time that we've been in sync about yeah, kind kind of the, the type thing. of products. Mm-hmm. So here's a shampoo. Yeah, Good, because yeah. I need some more. What kind of shampoo? Well, again, you know, tr- especially hanging around with you, I've tried to become more and more non-toxic because mm-hmm. we Good talk about you. it so much. And I'm like, yes. oh, really? I should. Um, 
so I have used Pantene for like, I don't Me know, too. 3,000 years, however Me long too. I've been on this earth, pretty much. I know. I think I went right from, you know, the Johnson Johnson's baby shampoo when I was a baby <laughs> to Pantene. Yeah. And yep. the Pantene packaging used to be so good. Remember when it had that gold, heavy gold top? Yeah. And it would be like the pink or the blue or the yellow. Very, or yeah, yellow. it looks very she yeah. It was so elegant. And I was so mm-hmm. all over that when I was, you know, younger like that. I, I was not going to get the purple bottle of shampoo or whatever. But then I said, oh, you know, I'm not sure really what's in there. There are a lot of chemicals. So I've been on the search and I bought a bunch of different shampoos over the course of a couple of months last year from Whole Foods and thumbs down on every single one of them. Yeah. Some of them are, it's hard. Okay. This is another thing. It's hard to find natural shampoo that doesn't leave your hair looking kind of flat, that doesn't really you know, feel, I don't know. Some Clean. of those just, yeah. Yeah. They those just don't gross. seem to work very yeah, well. Didn't work. And the girls were, my girls were like, oh, this is so bad. Like you everybody's know. walking around with flat hair. Yeah. Bad, bad, <laughs> bad. And you know, and I don't like to wash my hair every day and you felt like you had to, but because you just, oh, but anyway, yeah. so I asked my hairdresser, Max, yes. who I adore. And he suggested this brand verb, which I had never heard of verb, like, Noun, like verb. Yes. V E R B. Yes. Okay. Never heard of it. I had never even seen it. Um, and he got it for me at his you know, beauty supply place. So I just paid him for it. But I right. did check what because I didn't want to tell you about something you couldn't get. And you can right. get it online too. Oh, it's so great. And oh, so wow. I, and oddly enough, he's handing me the one for limp hair. I'm like, dude, you should know of all for the people you? on earth. I do not have limp hair. Like my hair is I what, is he too, trying to mess with you? I have too You're much gonna hair. be Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana. No, 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 no. No. What it does is it doesn't give you more volume. It's it takes care of like the flyaways, which I do have. Oh, I need that. So a major somewhat, frizz. Yeah. So Matt is sort of counterintuitive based on what my hair is and what it is. But anyway, you do say my crushes take a lot longer than yours. And man, you are right. I just keep going on and on. But anyway, I love the shampoo. So it's verb ghost shampoo. So it's the white and black one, which also looks nice in my bathroom. So that's the one that's for the, what did for, he say? It was Yeah, it's kind of like- For the flat hair? What did he say? It, I think it, it's, I think it says on the label, like for limp, like- you know, oh, I don't hair. have a lot of hair. I got way too, I got much, I could sell some hair. I got way too much. Yeah. Hair. You got plenty of hair. Uh, but it, so but the, the ghost refers to the, for the limp hair. Is yeah, that what that the means? The ghost oh. one. They have different ones, but oh, yeah, okay. the ghost, it's, I'm going to try the that. white and black one. And it has, um, uh, moringa seed oil, uh, 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 quinoa protein and sunflower seed extract. Like in a pinch, you could eat this and it does smooth away your flyaways and wow. it's chemical free. Well, and your tip about the argon oil, I have been, I love that stuff as a moisturizer. I know. And then stinking and... Trader Joe's doesn't have it at mine anymore. I don't know what I'm going to do. What? Yeah. You, so if you okay, see it, you're at freaking yours, me out. Buy a few bottles. You're freaking me out mm-hmm. because that's where I get mine. I'm gonna have to start. No, stock I'm up gonna on have it. to do what I do with the candles. I bought a case of candles there last year. Oh my because goodness! I love their candles, and they're so inexpensive. But it's, it's great for your face. I, I've been using it like crazy. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I between... wish I'd known about this when I was 18. I would have started bathing in this. <laughs> I know. Rather than I was using Noxema at the time. Um, yeah, rather than doing that. Yeah. It, it, I've been alternating. So I'll do my regular night cream and then the next night I'll do the, the argan oil. Mm, it's the so, best stuff. So good stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, try the verb. I'll link it. There's also the ver- it's the verb ghost shampoo and verb ghost hair mask conditioner. The bomb. I love it. So you like the conditioner as well. Oh yeah. 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 Okay, great. I'm going to order them today. I'm excited. So the show is not called Decorating Tips and Tricks for no reason, right? There are a lot of tips, right? And now we have a tip from a a listener. It's a tip from Tracy. Tracy Tracy. sent this tip probably last fall. I'd say we get so many emails, right? And I try to use them. I I try to incorporate the questions. I don't know how you keep track of them, but you do pretty well. I, I try. I try. I hope no one slips through the cracks. If you feel like you slip through the cracks, send me another one. But I am very diligent. And you may just be on my list because I try to fit the questions in 
when it's somewhat related to a topic that we're covering. So I may have gotten Tracy's tip at the end of the fall last year when we had already recorded all the fall. You know what I'm saying? So Tracy, I hope you're still listening. And if you are, today is your day for your trip to be shared with the universe. Okay. So Tracy sends this tip about fall decor. Use a glass cylinder and it may be one that you'd want to fill with something like uh, dried beans or even mosses, something like that. So if you're intending to fill your glass cylinder with something and maybe plop a candle in it or something like that, here's the tip. Put a small washed can, you know, a metal can that maybe veggies or something came in upside down inside your cylinder. And just make sure there's room for you to surround it with your beans or your moss or, you know, I guess you could do this in the summer, your sand, what have you. So not only does this save you on fill, uh, but it also gives you a pedestal for a candle that you may be putting in there. I love it. Isn't that great? That's a great idea. I know, because otherwise your candle would be all smushed down or you'd have to be so many bags of beans in there or whatever, or bags of moss, which particularly the moss, I mean, that adds Mm -hmm. up. And if you put a candle on top of the moss, it's going to squish it all down. You're going to put more moss. I mean, it's just never going to end. So great tip, Tracy. We really appreciate that one. I thought that was really nice. And what, hey, you know, you could do that, Put I don't know, let's think, even like, like straw bale, you know, like, you know, said like, hey, you could do anything in there. Wheat, like the tops of the wheat shafts, all of in there, put your your can in there, surround it with that. And, you know, put the most perfect pear on it. Put the perfect apple, put a lighted candle. I wouldn't do a real candle if you were putting anything that's flammable, you know, do the battery ones. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We enjoy it so much. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, Any project you want to talk about, any room, any space, we are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.